This is a $300 diamond coated wire wheel. And today I'm going to show you why it might just be the best option for you to use in your shop. So if you've spent any time in a metal shop, you've definitely used a wire wheel. Now they come in a huge variety of different shapes and sizes, uh, but most of them are made out of basically three materials. You've got carbon steel, stainless steel, or brass. Now, if you're going to be using mild steel or a carbon steel material, you'll use a carbon steel brush. If you're using stainless or aluminum or any non-ferrous material, you want to use a non-ferrous brush. You don't contaminate it. All that being said, there is another kind of brush that you may have never used, and that is a diamond coated brush. Now, this is a stainless steel wire that is coated with diamond particles, and it provides a different type of finish and works completely different and incredibly effective on a variety of different things. I'm going to show you how. Okay, so if you do any work with steel plate, you know that heavy plate, basically anything thicker than like, I would say, quarter inch, has a really difficult and thick layer of mill scale on it. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, stay tuned because I'm also gonna share how this works on regular sheet metal. But to show just how effective the diamond wire wheel can be, I'm gonna show it on this piece of two inch thick solid steel plate. This is hot roll plate and it has a very thick layer of mill scale. Now, the way I'm gonna kind of show the comparison between this and a regular knotted cup brush, even a small flap disc, is I'm gonna kind of work my way through the three items, uh, kind of doing each of them on this plate and showing how long they take. Now, the difference that you're gonna see with the wire wheel is not only is it faster, but it also leaves a very unique finish. And if you do decorative work, it might be something that appeals to you. Now, before I do anything, there's a critical tool that you need to use pretty much any wire wheel effectively, and that is a variable speed angle grinder. This is a variable speed grinder from Milwaukee Tool, um, and I really like this one in particular just because it's very stable, and you can see the variable speed knob here on the back. Now, you want to run wire wheels basically at a very slow speed. It will help keep the wires from flying out and generally prolong their life. If you do any metal work or you're serious about working in the shop, you want to get yourself a variable speed angle grinder because you're definitely going to find that you'll get longer use out of all your consumables if you have one. So I'm going to start with this knotted cup brush. This is a carbon steel cup brush and I'm going to do a section of this plate and we'll time it and you can see how long it takes to kind of get down past the mill scale to bare metal, if at all. So I paused the timer to kind of show you something and I'm gonna bring in tight with the camera and that is the actual thickness of the mill scale and how you kind of get through some layers of it. So right in about this area, I'm through the mill scale, but over here I can still see some kind of remnants on it and the material is not completely clean yet. So that was about two and a half minutes of grinding. I probably spent a couple seconds resetting the camera. Now, even with the cupped wire wheel, you can see that it looks really shiny, but I actually haven't even broken through the mill scale. I basically just polished it. To grind it off, we'll need a flap disc. Okay, so this is a brand new 60 grit flap disc. And just because I know a lot of people use those to pull off mill scale, I'm gonna do the center section here with the flap disc, and then we'll use the diamond. So that was pretty quick. It was definitely less than 50 seconds, probably like 30 or 40 seconds. But, um, you know, I'm down, but I'm not down to really bright metal yet. So after, let's say about a minute, I'm down to what looks like bare metal. But if you look closely over here on this leading edge, you can see like I mentioned on the wire wheel, it looks like we're down past the mill scale, but we really just polished the surface. The mill scale on this plate is actually so thick that we're not even getting close to breaking through it and hitting bare metal. So on heavy plate like this, the mill scale is so thick, you can actually kind of feel the bump between mill scale and bare steel. Now this 36 grit flap disc barely even touched the mill scale because the mill scale is so hard. Now if I switch this out for a Victo grain 
CC grinding disc, I'll be able to bust through the mill scale really quickly. And then we'll be able to compare the two to the diamond wheel. So seeing that this is bare metal and this up here is all mill scale, I switched out to a Victo grain grinding disc, which I did a whole video about. I'll show you how this can get us down to bare metal before we go to the diamond. So in about a minute, I actually bust through the mill scale in a couple of spots and you can see how I'm down past that. Now, last but not least, let's switch over to the diamond wheel. Let me show you how this thing takes care of mill scale. Now, one of the very critical things about the diamond brush is the speed at which it's ran. You're supposed to run this at a speed no greater than 3000 RPM. I like to run it at the slowest speed my grinder can do, which in this case, is 2800 rpm and look at how this thing is going to take care of the mill scale on this heavy plate so right there you can see i'm starting to erode past the mill scale down to that same bare metal that i got cheesed over here i couldn't even get close to that with the knotted brush and i'm using almost no pressure and i'm also not leaving any of these heavy grinding marks. I'm just removing the mill scale, basically just eroding it the lowest speed and almost no pressure. Okay, so in about a minute and 30 seconds with almost no pressure, which causes no fatigue, at the slowest speed, I was able to bring this down past that very thick and really, really tough mill scale down to real true bare metal. Now, the Victo grain did a great job, but it left heavy grinding marks. Now, heavy plate like this has very thick mill scale. I can actually feel the bump as I go from bare metal up to mill scale. It's probably I don't know, a couple thousands thick. So to be able to achieve that so quickly and also not take away any metal is really valuable. Now I know a lot of people aren't gonna be dealing with plate like this, so I'm gonna to switch to a more normal size and some quarter inch plate and just do a quick demo of what this can do to that mill scale. And I'm also gonna show you the brush effect this can leave on sheet metal. So here's a pretty basic piece of quarter inch plate I had cut out on the plasma table and I'm gonna just gonna hit it with the diamond brush so you can see how quickly I can bust through the mill scale, get down to bare metal, and also leave a really cool effect on it if this was gonna be a decorative piece that I wanted to use. And I'll have the timer running in the background. So almost immediately down past the mill scale and to bare metal. less than a minute to get this down to perfectly clean bare metal and I didn't remove any major material by grinding. Also a really cool kind of swirl pattern that's very unique. I'm gonna do this sort of area with the cut brush just so you can see a quick comparison. So in the same minute, all I was able to expose was probably a three quarter to one inch section of bare metal. Um, meanwhile, I did that entire section down to bare bright metal with no effort. I'm pushing pretty hard and I'm running my grinder a little bit faster and I'm still not able to get there. So the only other way I would be able to get down to bare metal and clean this off would be to grind it so I could switch over to the angle grinder and use a flap disc if I wanted to get there, but I'm also gonna be removing material in that way and it's not gonna give me the same you know, sort of deep scratch free finish that I would have got with the diamond wheel. So subtract a couple seconds for my dead battery, but call it a minute. And if, I, if you look closely at this, you can see that there's a big difference between the finish quality on both of these sides. So you've got deep, scratches from that 36 grit flap wheel on this side and almost no surface imperfection on this side. Really uniform kind of flat finish. 
And for me, if I was trying to develop a finished piece for a client, I would much prefer this finish and this one. This looks all hacky. For the ornamental metal workers out there, this is a piece of one by one solid bar. We'll show you what the diamond wheel does. So 35 seconds and this little side is super, super clean, bright metal versus that mill scale side. And this is one inch hot bar, hot roll bar. So getting that mill scale off is tricky. There are just a ton of applications that you can use a diamond wheel for if you're doing decorative work or if you really need to get rid of mill scale. You could probably guess it works great on tube. So a minute, about a minute, and I mean, look at the finish. It almost looks like it was blasted and I was working pretty fast. So you can imagine there is a lot you can do if you do metalworking with one of these wire wheels. The last piece of material I'm gonna show is just a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal. And I'm gonna show you what kind of a effect you could get using the diamond wheel because some people, especially myself, making decorative metal pieces for clients, sometimes they want something a little bit different and you can leave a really cool kind of brushed effect with the diamond wire wheel that I haven't been able to achieve with anything else on just this nice piece. This is cold rolled, so it's very, very clean already. But just as an example, I'm gonna run across this and show you what the diamond brush can do. Okay, so, oh, well, it showed for a second, but that was about 40 seconds. And you see the little halos of the magnetic chuck underneath it, but those will go away. So if we clean this off. So super kind of unique pattern, very randomized brushing and uh, very, very light pressure to kind of texturize this entire thing, which is kind of a cool look if you do decorative metal work. Okay, so the big question is, is it worth the money? Now, this wire wheel is about 30 bucks. This is a high quality carbon, not cut brush. This diamond coating wire wheel is about $300. So 10 times the price of this. Now for the casual user, this is probably too expensive for you to use, just full transparency. But if you do anything that involves getting down past heavy mill scale, or you do decorative metal work, this is 100% worth its weight in terms of your time because the fatigue that you experience using traditional grinding wheels and the damage that it does to the base metal by grinding through that mill scale and then leaving deep grinding marks uh, is easily outweighed by the use and the kind of ease of use of this. Now, the longevity of this is completely dependent on the way you use it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, variable speed grinder is 100% necessary when using a wheel like this because anything over 3000 RPMs will pretty much shred the diamond right off of the wire. So the diamond is actually, I wanna say it's electroplated to the wire. So if you go too fast or you hit too many hard edges, you're just gonna shed the diamond off and it's just gonna turn into a stainless wire wheel. So you have to be careful kind of when you're using it. And if you're not gonna use it and you're gonna train somebody in your shop, make sure that they're aware of how much it costs. So maybe they'll treat it with a little more respect. I know this tool isn't for everyone, but the results are clear as day when you compare them against the other options you have to remove mill scale without using like an acid. And I know someone in the comments is gonna go, oh, I don't even bother grinding off mill scale. I dip my pieces in hydrochloric acid. Well, you can't do that if the piece is particularly large or really, really heavy, like some two inch plate with crazy heavy mill scale on it. Anyway, I think it's a really cool tool and it's something I didn't know existed until my friends over at Fared told me about it. Either way, you're gonna wanna get yourself a wire wheel if you don't already have one. I have a whole video about those which you can check out on my channel and give the diamond wire wheel a try if you can afford it. Shop around for the price though because prices vary. I'll leave some links down below where you can find one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow me here on Instagram. I'm Chris Zep for Make Everything and I'll see you on the next one.